I'm going to be chairing the next session and we're going to be talking about funding for healthcare innovation in 2021. So originally we're going to have a few speakers talking about uh, a few areas of funding, but uh, because of the interest uh, in keeping to time, I'm going to do a quick introduction into the Leicester Life Sciences Accelerator. We're going to move the discussion on external funding landscape into the breakout room. Uh, we were going to have to talk about KTPs and MPhil opportunities with Benoit Welch and Arno Drapier, but that is also going to move into the breakout room. But we are going to be talking to Sandy Reid at the end of the session. Uh, she's the Investment Director of Mercia Asset Management, and she's going to tell us uh, how to get venture capital investment. Leicester Life Sciences Accelerator is uh, based at the Leicester Innovation Hub. Uh, we're part funded by the European Regional Development Fund and we deliver our project in partnership with the Midlands Engine. Uh, we provide innovation support to local SMEs working in the life science and healthcare sector. Uh, we, how we do this is to link companies with our clinicians and academics to help uh, accelerate uh, the development of new products and ideas. And this innovation support is provided by free time with our clinicians and academics, and this can be a minimum of 12 hours per project. So the types of projects we are interested in funding are um, consultancies with new product development. Uh, there's been a couple of examples of that this morning. Uh, we've worked with uh, Elephant to get some uh, initial trial data for the kiosk. Uh, we've worked with uh, Schieffer Technologies to get some uh, clinician feedback on their CPAP device. It could be a conversation around uh, accessing clinical pathways and clinical trials as early in your product development as possible. It could be a discussion around uh, routes to external funding or getting some pilot data so you can uh, apply for some, uh, some translational funding. Again, we've heard a really good example of how we can help you overcome some regulatory uh, hurdles through our uh, discussions with Sarah and Carl. And we can give some initial advice on protecting your ideas and signpost you to IP experts. But on top of that, we can organise patient and public involvement events uh, to help with your product development or demonstrate uh, technologies which you might want to integrate into your product development. But overall, what we want to do is develop long lasting relationships with our company so we can work together to develop uh, collaborative projects and obtain external funding. So if you want to hear more about the external funding landscape or um, any of the open op uh, opportunities for life science funding at the moment, uh, please come along to the breakout room. I'd like to hand over to Sandy read it and uh, hear about funding from some VC funding. Thanks for the introduction and I think a little bit of a change of topic I caught the tail end of the last session and it was very much more focused around um, you know CE markings and some of the details that are involved in life sciences. Um, this is a bit more of a general overview around raising investment and the funding landscape, but I've tried to include a little bit of a focus on um, life sciences as we go, because I know the audience would be interested in that. So cutting right into it, <coughs> excuse me, if you've not come across Mercia before, we're an aim listed investment house. Um, we've got about 400 portfolio companies and have um, about 100 employees, we've got 800 million of assets under management and life sciences is one of the areas that we invest in. So you can see here the sort of funds that we have. Um, I think for the audience today you'll be more interested in, I don't know what you call that, the turquoise colour um, part of the funds that we manage, which is our venture back funds, which really go from seed all the way through to sort of series A, series B sort of level. And for the right companies, we can help them take them through that whole journey. So in the Midlands, the, the fund that will be of particular relevance is the Midlands Engine Investment Fund, which is targeted towards proof of concept and early stage businesses. Um, this fund was launched in 2018 and was a, had a total fund size of 23 and a half million. And it's focused at the early stage of the market. 
um, it is spread across the whole of the Midlands region. So um, whilst Leicester and Leicestershire are part of that, there are also 10 other LEP areas that, that have dibs on, on, you know, trying to get access to the pot. Um, it ranges in si investment size from 100,000 to 750,000 into any one business. And because of the nature of the fund, first investment is likely to be at the lower end of that amount rather than the upper end. Um, this is convert commercial venture investing in businesses. And I'll talk a little bit more about that if you're not familiar with it. But we're looking for ambitious and innovative SMEs who are looking to get to the next level in their business. So <clears throat> I agreed with Helen that I'd talk a little bit about um, how you approach investors, what the background is to doing that, um, some of the thinking that you might need to go through. Um, hopefully I'm not teaching people to suck eggs, so hope you'll find it interesting. First question I always think is interesting to come from, why would a VC invest in your business? And, and I think this first point is, is you know, it, it's useful to flip your thinking around. You don't get money just because you need it. What we're actually looking for is an investment return. The business needs to have a good commercial plan that's viable and the finances, you know, whether you're pre-revenue, which is highly likely in a life sciences business, we've got to understand the finances and where it's ultimately going to get us. So the, the key takeaway from this slide, and I appreciate I'm rattling through these, is a need for money does not equal investment readiness. And I guess if you take one thing away from my presentation today, it's about being prepared before you approach um, a venture capital investor. So in terms of who you can approach for funding at different parts of your life cycle, um, I've tried to capture this in, in this sort of simplistic diagram. At the top, you've got um, the stage of your business, whether you're at the concept stage, pre-product, pre-revenue or revenue generating. And then look at the types of funding that you can find to support your business. And you'll notice that in the early, very early stages, you might need to put some of your own cash in it. There's the classic friends and family round where you get people that you know to maybe invest in your business. There's access to grants, which I know through the university you probably had more presentations on and, you know, maybe more information about what grants are available in life sciences than, than I can provide. And then you start moving into the territory once you get to pre-product business angels and then probably around about the pre-product pre-revenue stage, venture capital becomes interested. And then as your business builds and your revenue generating, that would move to private equity. So you can see there's a variety of different routes and just pull out so grants are non-dilutive that means you are awarded the money to undertake activities people are very familiar with that loans and and debt products are probably only applicable once you move to a revenue generating product so here you borrow the money and you pay that from the revenue that you're generating the third part and why probably more pertinent to life sciences is where you're in a long pre-revenue phase, debt providers are unlikely to be willing to offer you debt because they can't see how it's to be repaid. So that is where you sell equity in your business, so part of the business, to a business angel or venture capital investor who takes a, a bet, for want of a better word, that your business will be more valuable in the future than it is now. So taking that as red and thinking that venture capital is going to be a route, I mean, obviously that's the, the side that I come from because I'm a venture investor. Um, how do you even approach a, a venture capital investor? Well, the first point of contact is usually a pitch deck. And the aim of a pitch deck is not to include every single detail of your entire business plan but to put enough in there that you can start a conversation with an investor. And what should you be including in there? And I've tried to highlight the parts that I think are particularly important, the things that we really want to understand and get interested in. First and foremost, a management team. Do you have track record? Do you have experience? You know, is, is it just one person or have you managed to build out a team? Have you identified gaps in your team? What do those look like? The second part is what's the market need? How big is the market? Why would people buy your product? You know, who is going to, to be interested in the long run? 
do you have a competitive advantage? Who are your competitors? Everybody has a competitor. Might not be obvious to start with, but everybody has one. So what makes you better than the people around you? And then what's your route to market? How are you going to, to get your product to market and start making money from it? And then backing it all up, a really solid financial plan and operational plan. How are you going to move through the process? And I can't emphasize the part around financials enough. Um, I've been investing in the early stage part of the market for a while now, and I know it's the part that many entrepreneurs find the most difficult. It's not in their skill set. They're not trained accountants. But to convince an investor to invest in your business, you must have a credible financial plan. And here's where you might need to reach out to local accountancy practices, see what supports available from the LEP. But because without a viable financial plan, it would be incredibly difficult to get any investor interested in your business. And then the final point, <clears throat> which sometimes and actually quite often gets missed, what's the exit route? And from that, we mean, where does the investor get their return? If we put some money in today, how will we get more money back later? That's the primary concern of a venture investor. So is there a credible route? And you know, by that, I mean, where would you sell the business? Is it going to be a trade sale? Is it going to be a management buyout with private equity money? You know, is it going to be an IPO, which is floating on the stock market? You know, what's the route? Have some thought about how that's going to happen to provide a return to your investors. You know, have you already thought, is it likely to be a trade sale? Most exits in the UK for venture assets are trade sales. So if you've looked around the market, who would be interested in buying your business further down the line? Have you started any conversations with them? Are they your customers? And the other one that's very helpful for investors to see if you've given some thought is what are the exit comparators? And by this, I mean, have you identified any companies that are similar to yours, maybe operating in the same sector? And have they sold? Have they been sold to a business? Have they been acquired? And if so, how much was paid for that business? And it starts and it helping an investor build a picture of where the value will be in the business. Now, life science investments, um, just getting on to something a bit specific. I mean, some of this does apply across other sectors. You know, for an initial investment, we, we want to see a product or service that has really got to proof of concept. It might be that you've got a minimum viable product, that's the MVP, or your first two customers signed up. If it is a product, is there a clear proprietary opportunity? That means, are you differentiated? Do you have intellectual property that separates you from the competition. And then we understand that there might be a long route to exit, but we want to understand the clear value inflection points that funding can provide. So if we invest a certain amount of money now, how far will that move your business towards a final exit? You know, will it allow you to achieve your first clinical trial, for example? You know, because that's a significant value inflection point and can then justify further investment in the business. An addressable market. So, you know, what is the market and why are you going to be able to tackle it? Why are people going to buy from you or not a competitor? You know, do people really want that product? And then thinking about how much money is needed. You know, is it realistic how much you want in the first instance? Now, an investment of one to two million might get you to that demonstration point, but that might be tranched into smaller amounts. And it goes back to the third point about what are your value inflection points? Um, you know, we understand the life sciences market. We've got a number of life science investments in Mercia. And so we can bring more than just money to help move companies along that track. So but in terms of a case study, this seemed an obvious one to put in. Um, MIP Diagnostics is a University of Leicester spin out and Mercia made their first investment in 2015. Um, it's no longer in Leicester and it actually moved down to Colworth Park, which isn't a million miles away. And, you know, I tried to capture on this slide and I'm sure you're all busy reading because there's far too much text on it. Um, I tried to capture the thought process that we've been through with MIP Diagnostic, and it really goes back to the slide that I showed before. You know, when we first looked at it, you know, early evaluation showed that the product actually worked. There was a clear 
IP ownership around it. You know, we've worked well with the University of Leicester to, to really take this product to market. And there was a good understanding of what needed to be done to move through those value inflection points. You know, MIP diagnostics journey is not over. However, they have now been able to achieve multiple rounds of investment and move the business along each time. It was targeting a big market, and but it had definable market segments that could be tackled underneath of that. And although it wasn't a two million pound first investment, the 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 tranched investment up to that level has allowed the business to stand alone and move away from the university. And that's actually quite an important milestone. You know, when you're first getting going, actually being able to incubate inside the university is very helpful as you go through the early stages. But being able to break away from that and stand on your own two feet as a business is, is an important milestone for these early stage businesses, particularly, you know, university spin outs, being able to show that you can stand as a business. And during that period, the management team has been built out and more commercial evaluations put in place. So the final piece of the puzzle is actually building a syndicate of really good investors around MIP. And I'm sure if you looked at the press releases, you'd see it's not just Mercy are now invested in MIP diagnostics, but BGF and Downing are in there as well. And, you know, our network of contacts allows us to help build that type of syndicate around a business. But, you know, we got involved at an early point and we wanted to help shape the business plan and the business model. And I think, you know, when you're looking for investors, ask what they're going to do for you as well. You know, how involved are they going to be? How much are they going to support your business? So I think that neatly ties into to my final point around the, the process. A lot of people are very targeted and focused on the front end of venture investing. You know, how do I get in front of a VC? How do I get my pitch deck together? How do I interest them and get the money in? And, and I always like to remind people, it's not just about getting the deal done. It's not just about getting the money in. You are getting a business partner who is going to be working with you for the foreseeable of your business life, you know, your day to day meetings. We will take a board seat. We'll be involved at monthly board meetings. We'll expect information flow, you know, management accounts. Um, we encourage and take part in regular strategy days of the business to review how the business is progressing. We can actively support and we'll get involved with helping to build the, vo the board and introduce professional advisors and then look and support the company through subsequent investment rounds and participate in exit planning. So I just wanted to kind of emphasise it's not just a one off, take the money and then you're done. It is a business relationship that is ongoing. So <clears throat> how do you stand out from the crowd? Because there is a crowd. You know, in a typical year, Mercia sees somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 business plans. Not all of them life sciences, but a good chunk of them will be life sciences. So how are you going to stand out from, from all of those other propositions that we look at? Goes back to the points I was emphasising earlier about preparation. You really need good financials. It is a classic weak spot for um you know, entrepreneurs, early stage entrepreneurs coming in for their first round of investment. You know, what does your team look like? And OK, your team might not be fully formed, but have a good idea about what you're missing and what you're looking for. What have you done around commercial traction and market engagement? You know, how have you validated where you've got to? You know, it's not just an idea. If I build it, they will come. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it, you've been out there and spoken to people. And conversely, what do you know about your the VC and what they're doing? You know, there's nothing worse than approaching a VC that doesn't invest in the space that you're you're looking for investment in. Um, a good example for that is Mer from Mercia is we we do life science investing, but we um, don't typically look at therapeutics. 